And more importantly, to talk about voting rights of the non-citizens is that how can we talk about or how can we think about political participation beyond this national state construct where rights are just being given to certain people with the right citizenship? And why can we or how does marginalization work and how can um, marginalized group fight against this systematic exclusion? So here I will and um, yeah, here, as you can see, we started with a petition on change.org and with our, uh, with our campaign, our campaign, again, is called Nicht Onnels 14 Prozent and the link I can also send in the chat later, but it's also in the last slide. It's a campaign for vo voting rights of the non-citizens. Why 14%? Because 14% um, of the adult population in Germany don't have voting rights because they don't have German citizenship. It's a very important question because 10, and these 10 million people are just the only people who have who are being registered here. So all of the other people who are living here, and there are many people who are living, especially in big cities like Berlin, there are many people who are also living here for many years, but they're not registered. So when we're talking about these 10 million people, we're just talking about those who are registered. And 10 million people, 14% of the population don't have voting rights. What does that actually mean? It means that in the biggest political event that is happening in Germany, which is, for example, election, which was election, um, bef I think like four months ago, yeah, it was in September, 10 million people didn't have any right to vote. And this leads to a bigger problem, which is as long as people don't have voting rights, not only they're not being represented, but also the political parties are not even trying to gain their interest. They're not even trying to gain voters within these groups. And what happens in the end is that these people who are also being affected by really different um, power structure, uh, who are being uh, mostly pe uh, are people who are being racialized. So they're um, also experiencing racial discrimination within their queer people who are also experiencing and sexual uh, discrimination. And also there are many or most of the people within this 10 million people are also people from working class, which means they're also being affected by classist um, power dynamics, don't have voting rights. So the most marginalized people, the people who are being affected by the um, intersectional um, power structures are those one who actually don't have any voting rights. So they cannot represent themselves and they cannot have any um, participation in this election. Um, the first question which is being raised um, when we're talking about, um, uh, about voting rights is why naturalization doesn't solve the voting rights problem. This is also a question that uh, many politicians and parties uh, have been trying to tackle because the only way so far, the only way that German politics, for example, tried in any ways to solve this question was to say, oh yeah, but if people want to vote, they can also get German citizenship. But actually, this is, I mean, it's, it's not as easy as it sounds because of many reasons. The first reason is that in order to apply for German citizenship, there are many barriers. You need to have a steady income. You need to have a certain amount of income, which already exclude many people, like for example, single parents who have to take care of their children or caregivers or people who are working in precare situation, people who are working with um, limited um, working contract, people who don't have a higher incomes, especially workers, people who are working um, half time from this whole naturalization process. This is the first question. So this makes the naturalization process also a question of class, because the problem is that a certain class are being excluded from this whole process. The other barriers are like, for example, German language. So you have to, you need to um, reach, I think now it's B1, um, certain amount of language in order to apply for naturalization. You don't have to have any history of criminal, you don't have to have any um, criminal record, for example. So many people who have been in prison for many different reasons are not even have this option ever. 
to have uh, to reach naturalization and many other um, bureaucratic barriers also because many people in naturalization is a very very complicated bureaucratic barriers and it's not possible for many people to even apply for that on top of that the thing is that there are also many people who don't want to who don't want to apply for german citizenship because in the situation right now um it it might change in the uh, next four years as it was written in the um, german coalition um, a contract but it might change but right now there is also not a possibility of have uh, multiple nationality so uh, naturally people have to give up their other nationality their, the, their other citizenship in order to get german citizenship and because of that many people don't do it and on top of that there are many people who don't want to get German citizenship. There are many people who are living here. Everybody are paying taxes. Everybody have to obey the rule, but still they don't want to get the German citizenship, but they don't know they want to have their basic rights, which is a democratic rights of voting rights. So uh, the, our main agenda is that voting rights should be a right and not a privilege. It's not something that sh it should be earned. It's not something like naturalization, which also shouldn't be earned, but it, it, it shouldn't be through a process where you need to first prove a certain kind of services or certain kind of integration um, or whatever that means in order to earn your rights. It's a democratic right that everybody have to have. Also, everybody who are living in Germany are paying taxes. So the question is that why you can pay taxes, but you're getting systematically excluded from this whole system. And the most, or um, another really important question is that how can we talk about an anti-racist politics? How can we talk about a feminist politics that exclude 10 million people? Now I'm seeing it here, I wrote 14, 10, 10 million people. Um, that's why that we started this campaign um, we started three months before the election. I mean, we, uh, we start like we officially started three months before election before that we were planning um, for that. The first um, or the, yeah, the first thing that also brought us a lot of success in that sense, in the sense of campaigning um, was that we got a lot of media coverage. Um, so many um, important um, German, and magazines wrote about this, which helped us getting through more and more people. Because in, um, interestingly, even though this is a problem of 10 million people, this topic is not a topic that got any media coverage in the last years, even though there are so many especially migrant initiatives and organizations who are fighting for voting rights since 30 years ago. Before that, it was called foreigners' right. Today, it's called migrants' right and still people cannot, still there was not enough media coverage. So without campaign, with our campaign, we, um, we could gain a lot of media coverage that helped us reach many people and helped us bring attention to that topic which didn't have attention before. Mm. So to the future generation campaigners, I will definitely <laughs> recommend to try to also get a, as much as media coverage. It, to that, I will also come again, because um, this is also one of the, I mean, at one hand, it could be really, a, a, it could be a chance to have this media coverage. On the other hand, it's not, especially for marginalized group, it's really, really way harder to get this uh, media coverage because of lack of also social capital. Mm. And the other thing that we really wanted to do was also organizing and mobilizing. We didn't want our campaign to, or I, I really think that the online campaign shouldn't just be limited to online campaign because it will not change in the end anything. And so we try to also organize many different um, events and um, uh, also, uh, as you can see, um, a demonstration at Oranienplatz. We try to bring people on the street because streets are, uh, and especially Oranienplatz in Berlin is a very important place because it has always been a very, um, very important place for migrant demonstration and refuge for, especially for refugee and migrant um, um, struggles. And so we try to also um, mobilize different groups and different people. 
then um, connecting the struggles in that sense, we try to also um, get in contact with many different initiatives um, from, for example, Deutsche Wohnen und Co. and Eignen. Daniel was here before, for, um, and especially right to the city from them to um, ABBA, which is Bundes for Antirassismus, um, to COPE, um, to a TBB, to many, many uh, migrant organizations. And in our experience, it was very also important step because uh, as I said, this is, first of all, it's a battle that was, that has always been existed in the last 30 years. And so we want to get connected and also because so people can also ex uh, share their experiences and help us mobilize more people. And also at the same time, it's very important to then again co connect these struggles because this struggle of voting rights and lack of representation and marginalization is not just um, limited um, to migrants, but also we try to get in contact with um, queer activists, with um, and, and other anti-racist activists and initiatives um, and um, yeah, and Deutsche Wohnen und Co. in Eignen, which is, for example, um, uh, uh, citizen um, initiatives for um, living uh, rights. And as Cassia also said in the beginning, um, we were supposed to also talk about chances and challenges. So I wrote down very like very um, short things the first challenge is that of course there is nationalism and nationalism in that sense is that um through our campaign we got many many hate messages we had to go through um very different um uh, waves of uh, being against the campaign we had to of course there i mean the reality is that still not many people are convinced that 10 million people who are living in germany have to have voting rights so i i would say that the biggest challenge is to um find um allies and find enough allies to support your campaign and this allyship could also um of course it could be in the civil society but also it's really important or in our case, it was really important to also bring it into um, into different or find allies in the parties, because in the end, parties have to. I mean, in order to have this change, there should be a constitutional change, and in, in this constitutional change can just happen through political parties. And um, lack of social capital, which is really really important in that sense, because this is also not just our problem, but also um, a problem of many. Um, especially migrant groups, uh, which is called local uh, lack of social capital, which means that for many people, including me, who haven't been uh, who haven't been born here or have been um, ha didn't have this network or couldn't build this network, it's very very hard to reach other initiatives or reach any um, press or media. And then there is lack of interest from politics, which is very obvious because this topic was brought up into um, German parliament many times actually and I mean so far all of the politicians or like most of the politicians voted against it that's why that it has never changed and then there is also media representation I would say media representation it sound it might sound a bit paradoxical to what I said before but when I say media representation I'm talking about how um, this coverage, how is actually, how how is our campaign and in general and uh, marginalized people are being um, represented in the media is a very, mostly in my experience, a very um, problematic uh, issue because the, I mean, in my experience, it's always you're being reduced to uh, being a migrant or being a foreigner. So for example, I've been interviewed many times, at least 50 times in this summer, and I would say 90, more than 90% of the times, the first question is that, oh, how do you feel? It's not about, it wasn't even about the campaign, it was about my feeling as a foreigner living in Germany and not having voting rights. You're always, uh, instead of your political agenda, you're being always reduced to your role that the society is um, putting you in this construct. So while other people, while the dominant society can talk about more political issues, we are being always reduced to this um, role of the people who are uh, who don't have any agenda. 
And I, 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 I would say this, in my experience, this is one of the biggest issues and biggest and challenges that I was faced or that we have been faced because at the same time you want to use this, but at the same time you don't want to, um, yeah, you don't want to be reduced to that. You don't want this personal story. And um, what media, media most of the time wants is an authentic media story where people will come and say, I came here, I don't know, 10 years ago, five years ago, three um, years ago, and tell a liberation story of the foreigners who've been here and want to now gain their rights, even though it's a very, it's, a, it's, not, a, it's not our personal story. So I would say this is one of the challenges to not be reduced to this personal story, but at the same time, um, having this contact. And of course, the chances was that we got many, many supports from many uh, anti-racist allies and initiatives. We got many supports from especially migrant organizations. And the other chance was, that's also a question that I wanted, that was raised and I wanted to ask is that there is already really good examples of other countries. There's Chile, there's Scotland, there's Wales, there's Venezuela. There are many other countries where people, where citizens have voting rights and um, where non-citizens have voting rights. And um, either there's a, a minimum amount of years where people have to live in order to be able to vote or everyone can vote. And, um, and um, another important thing is that European citizens already have voting rights on the um, on the local in the in the local election. So what we also wanted to focus was to say, how is that possible that even European citizens who are living here, who have who also are not citizens, can um, vote in this election, but all of the other people cannot. And what does that actually mean? What is it, sh what is it showing more than this power dynamic and this discrimination between even uh, EU citizens and non-EU citizens? Um, and um, yeah, and again, under the chances I listed media coverage because media coverage would also help us going through. I was talking about challenges and um, chances. And of course, as she said, and as Clemens said, maybe Clemens, you can also talk about it later, but in order to change also the law, you need um, two thirds of the, um, part, the members of the parliament to vote for it. And that hasn't have been happening so far. And that's why that, um, yeah, it hasn't changed. And um, so the other thing is, I mean, while we were talking about, while I was thinking about um, what we can talk about, about the campaign was also really important to talk about facing disappointments in general, and not just in our campaign, but also in, um, in other campaigns, because I mean, the reality is that um, the, the voting rights, especially in Germany um, is a very, yeah, it's a very, I would say not new in that sense, but it's very hard to change. So it's very important to also, I, I would say, um, expect any new changes very soon. That's why that I think we needed, or one of the challenges was, was also to face disappointment all the time. So we asked different politicians also, not just in the event, but um, also from our petition, we asked different political parties and um, politicians to take stance on this matter on uh, voting rights. And interestingly, or not interestingly, there were many people who were against. There were, I mean, the, the biggest political parties, for example, um, which was CDU before this election, um, they, they, they were not agreed with our demand anyways. So um, they didn't take any stance. We tried to get um, the statement of FDP, which we have, for example, here from Konstantin Kula, that FDP is also very against uh, voting rights for non-citizens. Um, because people can, if they want to, they can get German citizenship. Um, we got some support from the German left party and German green party, but still, um, for example, in the, in, the, in the photo in the middle, which is written, kein Wahlrecht für alle in den Koalitionsvertrag, is that even though that, that there was a new government um, since October, and there was this new, new coalition agreement with, with this new government, which is uh, from SPD and the Greens and FDP, um, the topic of voting rights was not even 
in the coalition agreement, which also, I mean, everything that is in the coalition agreement doesn't also mean that it will happen, but when it's not even in the coalition agreement, it has a certain, I mean, it has a very obvious meaning, which is this topic is still not in the parliament and it will not change that fast. Which was, which was also a very big disappointment because as I said, even SPD, um, they really, I mean, there were many politicians who supported the, um, our, our demand, but still the parties, I mean, the, or, the, or the general um, parliament uh, members, the, 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 the whole stance on it is very against it. Um, and as I said on the right, I think another very, big um, challenge was also to overcome all of the hate messages, um, which I thought it's also really important to mention because um, later when Tara also comes to the panel, he can also talk about his, I mean, his experience of activism. But this is also one of the biggest challenge why many migrants and why many activists and initiatives will not continue or cannot do sustainable activist work, especially in this on this topic. And of course, we also had some moments of changes, which were good moments where, for example, the government in Berlin and um, in the coalition agreement to Berlin, they stated that um, they're planning to change the voting rights and they want to uh, make the voting rights uh, possible for all of the people. Who, so right now it's just for European citizens and now they want to make it possible for all of the residents in Berlin. Um, and they also trying to, um, yeah, um, with the, with the, um, with the um, criteria that people have to live here at least five years, which is also something that we, Anas, we lost you, I think. Um, maybe turn off the video and um, just the audio. Before we get back to Zanas, of course, uh, um, Clemens, you can also maybe join in um, what was Zanas just explaining um, or others who have remarks, um, because I think we lost her right now a little bit. <laughs> Maybe Zanas can write in the chat if she still hears us. Ah, she will re-enter. There she is. Okay, perfect. Sorry, I think my internet was gone. Um, yeah, now I'm trying to uh, share my screen again. Yeah, okay. Yeah, um, and yeah, that's it. That's what I wanted to say. <laughs> and these are our links um, on social media. And of course you can still sign our, um, our petition on change.org. I will also send the link here in the chat. And yeah, we will also continue this topic. I mean, we will have different, um, different events. Again, what we will do in the next month is that there will be um, other a communal election in different, like local election in different um, federal states in Germany. And we're trying to also put pressures on local governments on, uh, and local initiatives to also work together with us and to um, fight with us for the voting rights. So that our next steps would be to work on this um, local election and beside that we still try to um, raise awareness about the topic and yeah uh, 